Good morning. I am Carol Cormelink, the president of TV Toastmasters Club 9523. I would like to welcome everyone here this morning, and especially the behind the scenes members, our director today, Nikki Bishop, our floor director and camera number two, Steve Aaron Holtz, camera number three, Sheila Baker, and our viewing audience, welcome. You are about to embark on a pleasant journey in a toast through a Toastmasters meeting. One item of business, we do have a new brochure about Toastmasters, and it is called Finding Your Voice, Shape Your Future, Your Words, and Your Future. Visit a club today, you won't regret it. We have more than 200,000 members in 10,000 clubs in 80 countries. And you're sure to find a club near you if you will visit www.toastmasters.org, you will find a club near you. My next role is the Toastmaster is to act as a genial host throughout the program, including introducing the participants and to motivate you, the audience, to listen. By participating in the many roles and responsibilities throughout the meeting, we have the opportunity to receive a well-rounded experience in communication and leadership. One of the lessons to be practiced in speech training is that of expressing a thought within a specific time. I'm reminded of the man that when asked to give a 15-minute report, he said it would take him several days to prepare the report. And the boss said, well, in that case, then just make it five minutes. He said, that will take me three weeks to prepare. So to be precise and to say a lot in a few minutes takes a lot of training. Our timer today, Verna Gibson, is responsible for keeping track of the time for each segment of the meeting and for signaling the speaker when their allotted time is used up. Our first role today, the next one, is grammarian, and that's a three-part exercise in expanding your listening skills. The first is the responsibility to introduce a new word to the members to use throughout the meeting. The second is to comment on the use of English used during the course of the meeting. And third is to note those sounds that, and crutches, pause fillers that we use those little hiccups of thought that we use as we think. Our grammarian, Nellie Bowen, loves to work with words. She is a poet, a writer, a member of two clubs, and has reached the competent Toastmaster and competent leader level. Let us welcome our grammarian, Nellie Bowen. Madam Toastmaster. Our word today is conciliate. And it's a, something that we really need to work on now. It's conciliation on different levels, especially on the governmental level. It means reconcile, appease, make compatible. And the sentence, the negotiating team tried to conciliate the conflicting views of the three nations for the treaty. Conciliate. Thank you, Nellie. And Toastmaster. A Toastmaster wears many hats, and many of us are doing double duty today as one or two more things. Things. One or two more roles we're filling, fulfilling. Toastmasters has a tradition. Every member speaks at a meeting at least one to two minutes, and the table topic session ensures this tra tradition. The purpose is to have the members listen effectively, think on their feet, and speak with only a moment's notice about a topic that someone else chooses for them. Our theme today is cre creativity. There was a high school teacher. She drew a dot on the blackboard and asked the class what it was. A chalk dot on the blackboard was the only response that she had received. I'm surprised at you, the teacher said. I did this exercise with a group of kindergartners, 
And they thought of 50 different things. It could be a squash bug, an owl's eye, a cow's head. They had their imagination in high gear. And as Picasso put it, every child is an artist. The challenge is to remain an artist after you grow up. So put your imagination into high gear and tell me some of the many uses that we could use for this object. It may look like a hanger, but I'm sure that there's a lot of other things that it could be Nellie. Would you please come up and tell us? Nellie Bowen. Let's have a little heartier round of applause here. Thank you. Well, we normally hang clothes from this. That's what you usually do. What I have used it for is a getcha. If your desk drawers are like mine, they're filled to the top. And things are always sliding back behind the drawer. Do you ever stick your arm in there and try to bring something out? It won't go all the way. It gets stuck and you can't reach down there because your arm won't bend. I take it, use this, go down under, get under that paper and bring it up. And I've got my papers I didn't have to take the drawer out <laughs> because those things are heavy. And sometimes they won't go back in right. The next thing, you can stir paint with it. <laughs> you put that thing in a bucket of paint and you stir and you stir and you stir. Get it all mixed up real nice before you use it. That's two things. What else could I use it for? Well, I was told you're not supposed to hang anything from it, but what I have done personally, I have a lot of jewelry. I used to hang necklaces all the way across. They were hanging down. It sure kept those chains from tangling, tying up in knots. And I understand you can also use this around a flower bed. Take it loose, go scalloping, and make a beautiful scalloped edge. <laughs> and if you stop and think, there's a world of things. Because after all, this is wire, very easily bendable wire. And once you've got a piece of wire, it's amazing. You can do, a, there's no end to what you could do with a piece of wire. And so think about it. When you've got a hanger, <laughs> you've got a multitude of things. <laughs> Thank you, Nellie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your imagination and viewing audience at Dr. Haney's office, orthodontist office, they might add that it could be a brace for an elephant. And if you have ideas you want to register with us, call 831-3833 and tell us more uses for the clothes hanger. Now this may look like a little gift box, but what treasures might it hold or what else might it be? Joe Schwirling? I'm table topics master. First thing is this could be a building block. If you got multiples of anything, you can, you can build the world if you have multiples of the same thing. You can stack them up and create anything. A child might create a castle or uh, a car. That's, that's why the Lego blocks have become so popular because they can just, and they'll snap together and you can create anything from high tech to low tech. <clears throat> In my own case, I have a surplus of stuff. So I'm always trying to create more room. So anything such as this, you put two of them or four of them together, you can raise something up and raise it higher and higher and then you put something else under it. And then you put some more blocks under that thing and raise it up higher and higher and put more stuff under that. <laughs> <coughs> so in that way, I manage to occupy most of the space from the floor close to the ceiling. Any, anything that stru has structural integrity I can use to support something at a higher level. Additionally, any size box can be used to hold the multitude of stuff 
that everyone accumulates, put small things into small boxes, put a whole bunch of the small boxes into bigger boxes, <laughs> and put those bigger boxes into even bigger boxes. <laughs> Trouble is, you spent all that time putting everything in all these boxes, you never took the time to label them. Uh. That's my problem. <laughs> so now I've got boxes full of boxes full of boxes, but none of them are labeled. Hmm. So someday I've got to open them all up to find out what they are, and then I have to start the process all over again. I don't table topics, Master. Thank you, Joe. I can relate to that. <laughs> Actually, what this is, is a recycled birthday card that I have cleverly folded and cut and made this little box out of. And you may have that, Joe, so that you know how to make little boxes out of cards, greeting cards. The Topic Master, that was uh, me. I'd like to thank the participants for putting their creativity into high gear. Wow, let me start over. Thank you, participants, for your creativity in high gear, putting that into high gear. There is growing evidence that participating in table topics and gaining experience in extemporaneous speaking develops self-confidence and thus fosters personal growth. Viewers, do you have a skill that you would like to develop in answering unexpected questions when a boss asks you that unexpected question and you stumble for an answer as you gain experience in table topics you will be able to answer very smoothly visit the Toastmasters Club and learn to overcome any fear that you may have of speaking in public each club has its own personality so visit several clubs and find one that matches yours our first prepared speech for today is by Verna Gibson, competent Toastmaster and competent leader. Verna Gibson is speaking from the Advanced Storytelling Manual. She's on Project 4, which will complete her manual, and that will also complete her Advanced Toastmaster Bronze level. She is a retired elementary school teacher. She keeps busy with a variety of interests, which includes her six grandchildren. Now help me welcome Verna Gibson, the Real Olympics. Verna Gibson, the Real Olympics. And I didn't know your objectives. Jesse Owens was an all-American athletic hero for all America. At the 1936 Summer Olympics, this track and field star electrified the world by winning four gold medals. Although his record-breaking performance made him a legend in his own time, Jesse struggled his entire life just to make a modest living. Jesse Owens was born on September 12, 1913, in Oakville, Alabama, into a sharecropping family. He was a sickly child who barely survived several illnesses. He suffered from chronic bronchial congestion, bouts of pneumonia, poor housing, lack of food and clothing didn't help his health. He was the seventh of 11 children. But mama, I feel fine. Please just let me go outside and play with the other kids for a while. Emma Owens, barely fighting back tears, refused to give in. No child. You needed to help with the p cotton picking. We just can't afford for you to be sick. Now stop arguing and listen to your mama. Young Owens knew she spoke the truth, but it seemed so unfair. If I was so sickly, why should I have to pick so much cotton? I was only seven years old, and 100 pounds is too much for me. That's why I get sick. Child, you can't argue with your mama unless you want to fight face your papa. Now hush. I wish none of us had to pick cotton, but we got to eat. This was the life that Jesse Cleveland Owens was born into. Even at the age of seven, he dreamed of a better life. He didn't want to complain, but somehow he would make things better. When James was eight, the family moved to Cleveland. Shaking inside from fear of this new school and so many kids, 
He wanted to be anywhere besides standing in front of this class facing this teacher. Young man, I want to welcome you to my classroom. Now, what is your name? JC, James answered. That was what he'd always been called. The teacher misunderstood what he had said. Well, welcome to my classroom, Jesse. The name stuck, and from then on, he was known as Jesse rather than J.C. From an early age, Jesse loved to run. He could outrun all his classmates, but working in his spare time delivering groceries, loading trucks, and other odd jobs in order to help his parents pay the bills left little time for his favorite activity. One day in gym class, Jesse's speed was noticed by Coach Charlie Riley. Jesse, I know you work in the afternoons to help support your family, but if you can come to school an hour early in the mornings, I'll be your track coach. I see greatness in you, lad. Jesse could hardly believe his ears. Yes, sir. I'll be here early every morning if you can help me. I can't think of anything I'd rather do than run. Thank you, sir. With those simple words, Jesse Owens was set on a path leading to greatness. His destiny had begun. Coach Riley instilled in young Jesse that the only victory that counts is the one over yourself. By high school, Jesse was a track star. He set national high school records in the 100 and 200 yard dashes and the long jump. As a senior, he tied the world record in the 100 yard dash with a time of 9.4 seconds. Many colleges and universities tried to recruit Jesse, but he chose to attend Ohio State University. Ohio State wanted Jesse, but they didn't give him a scholarship. He had to work three jobs to pay for his tuition while keeping up with his studies <clears throat> and training as an athlete. At Ohio State, Jesse met fierce competition, and not just on the track. In 1933, the United States was struggling with desegregation. Jesse shared many of these problems with his new bride, Ruth, a childhood sweetheart. Ruth, I'm glad I came to Ohio State, but I just don't understand some of their rules. I can go to class and run track, but I have to live off campus. They let me travel with the team, but I have to stay at black-only hotels, eat carryout, or at black-only restaurants. I hear that once in a while, I might be allowed to stay at a white hotel but then I'll have to use the back door and the stairs instead of the elevator. Now, I don't like to complain. <clears throat> I know things will change. They're going to get better. By 1936, Jesse believed he could be successful on a more competitive level. He decided to enter the Olympics, which are known as the Hitler Olympics. Hitler intended to prove to the world that the German Aaron race were the dominant, dominant race. Jesse, however, had different plans. And by the end of the games, even German fans cheered for him. He won gold medals in the 100-meter dash, the 200-meter dash, the broad jump, and the 400-meter relay team. When Jesse returned home from Germany, he talked to Ruth about some of his experiences. You know, the crowd just cheered and chanted for so long when I won those medals. I thought it'd go on forever. And do you know, Hitler was so furious that he left the stadium before the cheering even stopped. Despite coming home with four gold medals and cheering crowds, the reality of segregation stayed with Jesse. After all those stories about Hitler, I couldn't ride in front of the bus. I had to go around to the back. It also appears that everyone wants to slap me on the back. They want to shake my hand and even invite me up to their suite, but no one is going to offer me a job. After that ticker tape parade in New York, 
You know, I had to ride the freight elevator to my own reception. Sadly, the financial instability of the Owens family continued. Jesse was not offered endorsement deals because he was black. In fact, he left school before his senior year in order to support his family. He made money running against dogs and horses. People say it's degrading for an Olympic champion to run against a horse. But what do I do? I have four gold medals, but you can't eat four gold medals. It's bad enough to be toppy, toppled from the Olympic heights to make my living with animals, but the competition isn't even fair. No man can beat a horse, not even for 100 yards. Years later, someone asked Jesse how it felt to have his world records beaten. Well, it's like having a pet dog for a long time. You get attached to it, and when it dies, you miss it, Jesse replied. Finally, in 1976, Jesse Owens was invited to the White House by President Ford and presented a Medal of Freedom. In 1979, President Carter awarded him with a Living Legend Award. Sadly, the very next year, March of 1980, Jesse Owens was dead. This hero had succumbed to a long bout with lung cancer. A full decade after his death, President Bush honored Owens' memory with the Congressional Medal of Honor. He called his victories in Berlin a triumph for all humanity. Jesse Owens once said, any black who strives to achieve in this country must reach down and grab another black child and pull him up to the mountain where he is. Jesse Owens was a true hero who never lost his perspective. Life, he said, is the real Olympics. Madam Toastmaster. Wow. Thank you, Verna. The object of your story was to, of your speech was to understand the techniques available to arouse emotion, and I believe you covered that. We will now have one minute of silence so the evaluator can write notes for her evaluation. Would you let us know when one minute's up? Are you finished, Sheila? Verna, I forgot something. Come back here. Come back up here a minute. I did forget to give her this little token of her reaching the next level of Toastmaster status, Advanced Toastmaster Bronze. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> You ready? Our second speech project today is by Sheila Mudd Baker. She is an advanced Toastmaster Silver and has a Toastmasters International co uh, competent leader. She is also a vice president of membership of the Northern Hills Toastmasters Club in Fairfield. She is the human resources manager for the Cincinnati Recreation Commission where she has worked since 1988. Sheila is working from the advanced manual on public relations, speech number two, resources for goodwill. She is going to tell us about the benefits of the Cincinnati Recreation Commission. Sheila Baker. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I have worked, as Carol said, for the Cincinnati Recreation Commission since 1988. This has been such a great honor. When I first came to Cincinnati in 1970, I didn't know there was such a thing as the Cincinnati Recreation Commission. And by the time I realized that there was such a thing, I thought that the Cincinnati Recreation Commission had one thing only, the same kind of thing that I had when I was a child. We had swimming pools. And I knew that the Cincinnati Recreation Commission had swimming pools because I saw them in my neighborhood. What I didn't realize, that at the time, there were more than 50 swimming pools. 
These days we're down closer to 40 swimming pools because swimming pools like people get very old. And unfortunately, we don't have to shoot them, but we do have to close them when they get way too old. Life goes on. Little children grow up. People become adults. During the time that I've worked for the Cincinnati Recreation Commission, I have seen small children start at five years old with the commission and work their way through day camps during the summer, after school programs during the school year, move on to teen programs, community service, learning to work in the day camps themselves, becoming lifeguards, and eventually finishing high school and college and becoming full-time employees. Now think about that. Only since 1988, we start pe people working for us as early as 10 years old, though we don't call them employees at 10. They are participants and learners. And when you think about what they have to offer to us and what we have to offer to them, that is a good question. What is it that we could offer to a child that would make him want to stay with us until he was 22, 25, 50? We even had an employee who retired recently at 90 years old. We have things for people that last their entire lifetimes. Now, the Cincinnati Recreation Commission is actually more than 75 years old. Its mission is to have a physical presence in every neighborhood to improve the quality of the life in the city with leisure programs for all ages, all ages. So we have preschools, and in some cases there are people who, who bring their babies with them to classes <laughs> too, all the way to the end of old, old age. We have programming for the frail and elderly. We want the whole community to be healthy and aware, but not just healthy in the physical sense, but healthy in the emotional sense, too. You know, the Cincinnati Recreation Commission offers real depth in terms of beauty. We have art classes, truth. We work with children to understand the differences between right and wrong, between uh, telling a white lie and being really full of integrity. We work with goodness, learning how to spread what your abilities throughout the organization and throughout the community, and unity. We work to knit those communities together and to knit the communities together in an entire city. We see ourselves as enhancing the quality of life for Cincinnatians. And our employees have very strong personal values, but these are also organizational values. Honesty, they are sincere and truthful. Teamwork, they cooperate with others towards a common goal. And teamwork is something we teach to children and adults. Integrity, they act in line with their beliefs. Communication, openly dialoguing and exchanging ideas with the communities, with our participants. Creativity, they're constantly looking for new ways to do things, new and more innovative ways to do things and respectful, recognizing that each human being who enters our doors is worthy of real respect. Now, that sounds like a big order, but it is a big order. It's not impossible. If each of us can live with integrity and honesty, organizations can do the same thing. And the Cincinnati Recreation Commission, like a human being, works to be more honest, it works to be greater. We work on our facility maintenance and improvement, our leisure programs, our community involvement, increasing the use of volunteers, increasing city participation, citizen participation in our work, expanding our recreational opportunities. Right now, we are in Anderson Township. Very close by is Mount Washington. Mount Washington has, the people of Mount Washington have wanted a new community center. That's what we call our recreation centers. 
and the people of Mount Washington have put together money along with the city of Cincinnati and we're going to build a beautiful new recreation center and we know it's going to be an exciting development for the neighborhood because recreation centers become the focus in neighborhoods. It's the social place that people of all ages go to. It's a place where kids can come after school and have a safe place. It's a place where seniors can go and have a reasonable price. I, being a senior, pay only $9 a year to belong to a recreation center and have the ability to take full advantage of all of the programs. We work on professional growth for our employees and having the best possible management and operations to make things work well for the citizens of Cincinnati. Well, I said I was going to talk about the benefits of the city of Cincinnati's Cincinnati Recreation Commission. There are benefits for recreation no matter where you are. If you're in the Anderson Township, <coughs> Parks and Recreation, Hamilton County Parks, City of Cincinnati, Recreation, any of these things, there are benefits, definite benefits that cut across all of them. We personally, in Cincinnati Recreation Commission, all of us believe we offer the most because we are the biggest and the most thorough in the kinds of programs we offer. We offer physical education, and that contributes to a full and meaningful life. We must be as healthy as possible to have a full life. We offer opportunities for relaxation, such as yoga. We offer programs that help children and adults with their self-esteem and their positive self-image. We pro try to help people provide for themselves balanced lives, full potential that allows a person to really explore their strengths, to improve the quality of their life, to get satisfaction out of day-to-day -day life. That sounds like a lot for leisure. Well, it's a lot for work. We spend our time divided in two ways. Our work life, our leisure life. And our leisure life includes our families, includes our friends, includes ourselves. And we have very little of it. And that's where many of us find our real satisfaction. In the time we have that we can share with the community, that we can bring pride to our community, that we can improve our cities. Because all of us want, in one way or another, to feel that life is better because of us. We are looking to help create a fit workforce, a productive workforce, to give big economic returns to the city, to lower the chances of vandalism and creative, creative, yeah, creative criminal activity. <laughs> <laughs> we want to provide a catalyst for tourism in the city. And in case you didn't know, Fountain Square, the programming on Fountain Square is, belongs to the Cincinnati Recreation Commission. That uh, when you go to Sawyer Point, that's the Cincinnati Recreation Commission. We have 32 community centers. Someday we will have 50. We have 40 pools that are open right now. We are in schools. We are on ball fields. It's soccer. It's baseball. It's football. It, it's everything you can imagine. These investments of time and energy that we take will improve the city, make life better for us, for our children, and our grandchildren. And when you think about it, what else would we want? Better lives for ourselves, our children, our grandchildren, through a better life for the city. The Cincinnati Recreation Commission can help you achieve that goal. Madam Toastmaster. Wow, thank you, Sheila. That's much more in depth than what I had thought it was. That's great. I noticed that you mentioned about the importance be teaching the children between lying and honesty. I visited Sheila's club the other night, and one of the men gave a speech on how much was your integrity worth and told about, I'm not a sports fan, so I don't remember the name, of the $5 million contract for a sports figure that had he, one of the, his stipulations of the contract was that he was not allowed to do some activities one of which was playing basketball. And he got together with his family and friends, played basketball, and by golly, he hurt his knee. And he went to the commission and told the truth and may lose his $5 million contract. So what is your integrity worth to you? A dollar, five dollars, five million dollars. And I will shut up so that we have one minute for the evaluator.
One of the advantages of Toastmasters is the immediate feedback that touches on what we did well, what we might do better, and ends with our presentation strengths. The educational feedback today is directed by our general evaluator, who evaluates every participant and everything that takes place during the meeting. Joe Schwerling will conduct the feedback portion of the meeting. He has achieved advanced Toastmaster brawn, has been happily retired for one year from the federal government, and devotes almost every waking moment to Toastmasters shopping and stacking his little boxes, or big boxes. Our general evaluator, Joe Schwerling. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. And our primary part of the evaluation process are the individual evaluators for each speech. So I will start by calling up Sheila Mudd Baker to give her evaluation of, of Verna Gibson's speech. Please welcome Sheila. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, all of you out in the viewing audience, and Verna. This was a story, and it was supposed to be a story. And there were three things that Verna was looking for. Character development, emotions evoked, and climax. And I included a couple of other things. This story of Jesse Owens gave a very good idea of why Jesse Owens was who he was. It didn't give you a complete idea. We don't know where he got that fabulous courage. But what we do know is that Jesse Owens started out as a sickly man with lung problems and eventually became someone who was very physically healthy and strong. There's a good background that Verna gave in his early illness, his love of running, and also part of his character was that galling aspect of segregation, something that upset him terribly, as it would any of us if we had to live through it. The fact that he had the strength of mind to run against dogs and horses just to make sure his family was OK showed that he was willing to do nearly anything in order to make sure his family was OK. The emotions that were evoked Frustration, a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, uh, determination, incredible determination by him and also by his mother. His mother was determined that he should be as healthy as possible. Excitement, wondrous excitement. The fact that Jesse Owens could go from a sickly child to an Olympic a multi-Olympic winner. What an incredible thing. I liked very much Verna's attempts at Alabama accents. I'm not sure what an Alabama accent sounds like, so she may have had it pegged exactly. <laughs> and her character voices, that she kept changing voices from character to character. Um, I did have a slight problem, only because I'm an avid television watcher and I know how that works that when you're working with a camera, if you turn away, there's a chance you'll lose part of the voice. When you're not a camera, of course, you're a camera. Hi, camera people, OK, <laughs> with a microphone. So if you're working with a lavalier microphone, you can turn easily. But one of the things you might do is cheat a little this way so that your voice is going into the microphone. That was, for me, one of the biggest uh, issues here, which we think we can easily solve. I thought it was interesting that in the climax, Jesse Owens died of lung cancer. Here's a child who had had pneumonia, bronchial problems, and he still died at the end of the same kinds of lung issues that he had when he was a child that just got worse and worse. But he still had an entire life, an incredible life. But I think more than anything else is the legacy of Jesse that, that you gave us. The fact that he believed that life was the real Olympics and one should pull up another behind him. There's nothing better than a legacy like that. Thank you, Verna. Thank you very much, Sheila. Just to uh, add a little follow up on, on Sheila's evaluation, I think you did a, a Good job of 
covering the, the techniques and the content of, of Berna's speech. He had good technical information on, and that's one of the reasons why we have this particular club where we have the opportunity to, to learn about the techniques relating to transmission of sound and, and, and the video. Um, one additional thing, Berna, uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, realize you're struggling with your cold right now. So uh, in some ways, that may have helped your voice because you had to, in, particularly in uh, representing Jesse's voice, uh, maybe, maybe that enhanced it. But uh, appreciate all your effort, both in being here, because I know that was a struggle, and g giving your presentation uh, under these circumstances. And we all have a lot to learn from uh, Jesse Owens as well. Um, I've always felt myself a little deprived that I haven't had any major challenges because when we have these challenges, we have something to overcome, and those people tend to strive and accomplish so much more. But at the same time, that's one of the things we're here at Toastmasters for. We're given the opportunity and encouragement by our fellow Toast members, Toastmaster members to step out of our comfort zone and take on these challenges. And with that support group, we, we all can grow in our personal and professional lives. At this point, I'd like to call on Verna to give an evaluation of, of Sheila's presentation now. Please welcome Verna Gibson. New ATM bonds. Thank you, Joe. And Mr. General Evaluator. The Cincinnati Recreation Commission. Sheila, I think you did a great job with your speech. First of all, how well did this speech fit the interests of the audience? Well, we have all been children, and we are all, at this point, grown up into adults. So obviously, this is something that we have an interest in. The other thing is, is something that we can offer to our children or our grandchildren. We are all concerned with our leisure life. We all want to feel better and get as much out of life as possible. The other thing here is that the Recreation Commission also presents an opportunity for volunteerism. So even if we're, uh, we're retired, we don't need to work, there are, this is another example of something in the organization that we can volunteer for. And of course, the other thing is that since our program is being broadcast in the Anderson Township, Sheila did mention that um, the, the, um, about the um, Recreation Commission, uh, their involvement here in the Anderson Township and the Mount Washington area. And this is where we live and or our audience lives. Our speaker, Sheila, was obviously well prepared. She knows her facts. She has been involved in the commission since 1988. She pointed out many facts. There are 32 commission centers, 40 pools. You can start at the age of 10 as an employee, although you're not paid. I think that's what Sheila said. So it's basically for all concern, all ages. The Cincinnati Recreation Commission is 75 years old. Some of the classes that they uh, rep are, some of the learning opportunities are art classes, learning about right versus wrong, goodness, unity, how this can be used in communities, ex enhances quality of life, teamwork, integrity. Now, if I had no knowledge of this speaker's subject, I would be feel friendly towards the organization and the speaker who represented the organization. She presented her information with integrity and honesty. She talked about professional growth. She talked about the benefits of this organization, physical education, healthy, full lives, relaxation through yoga, self-esteem, which is very important, not only to us, even though we may be adults, we still have to be concerned with our own self-esteem, but the self-esteem of our children and grandchildren. We all want to have balanced lives and live with satisfaction. 
Now, Sheila used one visual aid, a picture of a swimming pool. It was effective, it was easily recognized, and it's something that we can all relate to. We have all been in a swimming pool at some time in our lives, or perhaps it's something that our children or grandchildren are doing, are using right now. So it was very effective. If I was the president, president of this organization, I would have no qualms at all about choosing Sheila to represent this organization in community meetings. She is obviously very knowledgeable. She has a nice speaking voice. She presented the facts and information in an honest, straightforward style. Sheila, you obviously know what you're talking about. So yes, I would have no qualms at all about choosing you to represent this organization. Personally, I think you did a terrific job, and I cannot, at this moment, cannot think of how you might have improved on it. You did a terrific job. Thank you. Thank you. And once more, thanks on a, a very thorough evaluation. And, and as you ended your evaluation indicating that, that, there, that there wasn't a whole lot to, to be able to recommend. We try to include a combination of pointing out the positives for the self-motivation and providing the confidence for everyone to go on, but, and then also trying to provide these additional areas for improvement, usually just one or two items so they can concentrate. We have the additional benefit with TV Toastmasters that we can see ourselves back on television, so we even have even more feedback. The only suggestion I might have for Verna on her evaluation is uh, you covered so much of the content of the speech, and really for the evaluation it would have been, I think, as much as possible to try to concentrate more on the, the, those techniques and things. Yeah. It does show that you were a, a very uh, dedicated listener and, uh, and really absorbed the content. And, and I agree, I uh, learned a lot from Sheila's presentation about the Cincinnati Recreation Commission and hope that everyone can um, make it to the maximum use possible. At this point, I'd like to call on our grammarian counter Nellie Bowen, for her grammarian's report. Thank you, Joe. And our speakers, our first speaker was Sheila Baker. No, our first speaker was Verna. I'm sorry. And that was a wonderful story, Verna. I mean, he is an inspiration to everyone. I have heard that story before. But to see someone overcome obstacles like that, you think, why can't we accomplish more if they can do that much? Once, when you were speaking, you came to the word time in your speech, and you stumbled over that and repeated it. Uh, you cleared your throat, but I understand you're not feeling well. But you said one word that I didn't understand, and that was sounded like cobbled, C-O-P-P-L-E-D. So I wasn't sure what that was. And Sheila, on yours, you had, in your speech, you had two ahs, and you used the creative criminal activity. Well, I thought if you're going to be a criminal, it would be better to be creative. <laughs> <laughs> but on uh, Joe Swirling, Joe, I caught 10 Oz, just 10. And on um, the evaluations, Sheila for Verna, there were, uh, Verna had five Oz. And at one point you said, if I was, it should be if I were. And that was all I caught. Thank you, Ellie. Now at this point, I'd like to call Bernie Gibson back up for her timers report. Mr. General Evaluator. 
All right, Nellie, you had uh, 35 seconds on your word of the day, conciliate. You also had a minute and 57 seconds on your table topic. Right. Joe Schwirling had one minute and 47 seconds on his table topic. So they were both within the time limit. My speech was nine minutes and 20 seconds. Sheila's speech was exactly the same, nine minutes and 20 seconds. Sheila's evaluation of me was three minutes and 20 seconds. So again, we were all within our time limit there. And then Nellie, your grammarian's report was one minute and 47 seconds. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Madam Timer. At this point, I'll conclude with a, an overview of the meeting. Obviously, the start time of the meeting is, is extremely precise with television because it starts when the tape starts. <laughs> that's when you see it, and as far as you know, that's when it started, right on time. The overall flow of the meeting and the fulfillment of the roles was, was generally pretty good. Today we had a extremely over-organized Toastmaster, <laughs> Carol Carmelank, distinguished Toastmaster. Only suggestion I would have is I think you were too organized. <laughs> you had everything so scripted and written out <laughs> that you stumbled over a few of the words like creativity when you meant creativity, and I think you said uh, precise when, uh, when it was meant to say concise on but you, you speak so fluently in, in speaking uh, freestyle that I think you were hampered by trying to f follow the script, uh, particularly when it's relatively small print. So the only problem is you were, like say, over, over prepared for today's meeting. Similarly, um, because we happen to have a, due to illnesses and other conflicting activities, uh, we had a lot of people serving dual and triple functions, so that's so why we've had a lot of people coming and going, and one of our participants didn't have an opportunity to get on the screen at all, Steve Ehrenholz, he's been behind the camera the whole time, so I might have suggested that he also be called upon, uh, at least in the table topic session. The, particularly when we're presenting our meeting to those that aren't familiar with Toastmasters, whether it's guests in a particular meeting or in our case where we're broadcasting the meeting in the entire Anderson Union Township area, it's, it's better to go into the, the additional explanations of what each role is. And I think we missed some of that today, explaining, for instance, that the timers' roles, besides monitoring the time, giving the parameters for what each speech is. Most speeches are five to seven minutes, then we signal with red, yellow, and green for at the five, six, and seven minute. Table topics are in a one to two minute range, so we signal at one, one and a half, and two. Evaluations are in the two to three minute range, so we signal at two, two and a half, and three minutes. The signals may not be, avail may be, may not be visible on screen, but it serves as an indicator for the speakers to know where they that they're staying within the time limit that we try to on all our business functions especially. And in Toastmasters, we have a 30-second leeway on com trying to complain, complete after the red light. Um, similarly, the most clubs try to have the evaluator present the, the, the speech manual objectives in advance of the speaker giving their presentation. That way the audience, as well as uh, the other members present, know the objectives that the speaker is striving for is detailed in each of the speech manuals that we work from. And so I think that's something that could have, could have been added to, to today's meeting. But again, everyone preferred, prepared their roles very well. And as Nellie indicated, if we can just all work on our Oz, eliminate those, and put in more pauses and less Oz's. <laughs> well, that was cute. More pauses and less Oz's.
That was good. Thank you, Joe, for that great evaluation. And yes, I was prepared. This is my ninth toast, Toastmaster activity this week, so I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. And I would like to thank everyone who was here today, our viewing audience, for investing your time with us for self-growth and to our members for service to this club. Your cooperation and your gift of time made this a delightful meeting. I'm glad to learn. I thought the Cincinnati Recreation Commission was fluff. I realize it's much more important than that. It has a lot of good activities that they're going. I'm impressed. So each time you go to a Toastmaster meeting, you will learn something from the speeches. And I'm glad to say I've heard of Jesse Owens many times, but I really didn't know his story. Thank you, Verna, for sharing that with us. I, when you hear about segregation, you don't realize a person that's won four gold medals and yet they have to eat in the basement or they can't do this, they can't do that. That's, that just amazes me. So I'd like to thank you and I hope you will watch us again for our next meeting. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>